So this is our lesson on determine rate of change and the initial value. Rate of change is slope. That's what we're looking for. So when we do this, we're always going to be thinking about y equals mx plus b. That's the important thing right there. Rate of change is our m. Initial value is our b. We also call it the slope. Slope is our m, and y-intercept is our b. Up on the board, you'll see I've got a couple of new equations. The one there, and kind of, I guess, is a six-sided figure there. It says m equals y2 minus y1. So right up there, it says m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Everyone got that? So, okay, those are not napkins. They are not napkins. So, what are we doing? Okay. All right. So, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It is, it is the formula for slope. We're going to use it a lot. All right, so when we look at this, what we're gonna do is pick out two points. So this is point one, and this is point two, and I don't, it doesn't matter which points you call which. I will say if point two happens to be the larger of the numbers, it certainly makes the whole process easier. That's just one of those rules. So if this is point one and this is X, that makes this X one. And this is y1. Does that make sense? It's the x-coordinate for the first point and the y-coordinate for the first point. Good so far? What does that make for? Uh, X2. X2 and 32 is? Y2. y2. Now, all we got to do is transfer that down below. So y2 is? Uh, 22. No. Nice. 32. 32 minus, always put the minus there. This is what's going to get you in trouble, is you're going to have a, no, a problem with a negative number, and you're going to leave that minus off, <laughs> or you're just going to stick the negative and get in trouble. Remember, two negatives get together and make a positive, right? Mm -hmm. So 32 minus y1, what's y1? 22. 22 over x2? Uh, 2. No, 4. Minus x1. Two. So what's 32 minus 22? Uh, 10. 10. What's 4 minus 2? Two? 2. Can I simplify 10 over 2? Yes. yes. What will it be? 5 over 1. 5 over 1 or 5. Both of them work perfectly well. Either one is correct. Slope is one of those things you can leave in a fraction and get away with it because it's rise over run. Sometimes it's just easier to leave it as a fraction. Now we get to a little of a math problem here. To find the y-intercept on this, there's actually two ways to do this. I will show you the math way this one, and the next one I'll show you the easier way that I think. So let's look at this one up here. So I know my equation is, since I've got up here, right, y equals mx plus b. That one's pretty straightforward, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some coordinates in there. I'm just going to pick my first set of coordinates. So what's y? So I'm replacing y with 22, which is the y. I know the slope, right? The slope is 5 times what's x in that first set of coordinates? 2. 2 plus b. So now I'll simplify. 22 equals, what's 5 times 2? 10. Plus b. What do I do now? I'm all the way down at step 5, right? 4 or 5, I don't remember. Step 4 or 5 where I've got a, a constant with my variable. How do I get the constant off this side? 
add the opposite, which is negative 10. So here it goes away. I end up with B on this side. What's over here? 12. Do I have any coefficient with B other than 1? Nope. Life's good. Now I know B, right? I know B and I know M. Well, that means I can write Y equals, what's M? What's M? No, 5. 5X five. Five plus 12. 12. I now have my whole equation. Does that work pretty easy? So the M goes first? M, it's always Y equals MX plus B. Always. It's on the board. It'll be on those yellow cards. So if you ever need those, you're welcome to them too. So let's try number two a little differently. First of all, let's find the slope. The slope is going to be the same formula. What's the formula? M equals. No, come on, read above. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. We're going to go up here and label. So I've got point 0.1 and point 0.2. Okay. I picked two points. Did it matter which points I picked? No. No, you pick anything you want. In fact, as you guys get going on this, sometimes they're going to be really easy points. Heck, use them. And there's going to be points that are difficult. They might have fractions or decimals in them. Avoid them like the plague if you can. Go for the easy stuff. So what is what is this right here? What point is this? X1. How about 8? Y1. How about 2? X2, 15? Now I can plug all this in, right? Y2 equals what, Haley? Yeah. What has got, Omar? 15. Minus y1, which is? 8. All over x2? 2. Minus? 1. 1. So what's 15 minus 8? 4, 6. 8, 7. 7. What's 2 minus 1? One? 1. So my slope is 7 over 1 or just plain 7. seven. Let's talk about another method called regression. Regression works well if and only if you can see a pattern. Look at my x's. Is there an obvious pattern here? One, two, three, four, right? They're each moving up one. What is the x-coordinate for the y-intercept? What is always the x-coordinate? Uh, what is the x-coordinate for the y-intercept? Oh, the, for the y what is the x coordinate for zero. y? It's always zero. Very good. So if I can regress back to zero, meaning I can move here to zero, life's pretty good. Now, I need to do the same here. Well, let's look at how much did this go up by? How much uh, from 8 to 15? 7. How much from 15 to 22? Uh, Haley, yeah. I'd love you to pay attention, okay? You're doing a lot of stuff, but... How about from 22 to 29? 7. So every time it goes up, it's moving up 7, right? Yes. So what's 8 minus 7? 1. What's the y-intercept? 1. That's the easy way to do it. Then. It's another method. Multiple methods. Sometimes you can get away with this because the chart or the table will be obvious and you can use regression. When it's not obvious and you can't use regression, go for the formula. I'm going to show you the third way here in a second. Okay, so now I get my equation. Y equals, what's M? Uh, what did we find M as? 7x. Seven seven X. Seven X. And what's B? Four. Plus 1. Now, do me a favor. Get your calculator. Calculator. Go to graphs. Type in that table just like you know how. Wait, spreadsheet. Wait, graphs. Go to spreadsheets, sorry. Go to your spreadsheets, not having other conversations. Go to spreadsheets. Remember at top, you need to type in your X and Y. 
If you don't hit enter after the last one, you'll know it because it'll come up with a weird little comment. So I'm just going to type in all my X's. So one, two, three, four. Get off the wall, please. <laughs> all right, you got them all typed in? Wait, 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 wait. No. Should look just like mine. The other conversations need to stop. Something happened. That's usually the truth. <coughs> do we do menu after that? What is it you want to do? It's just the last one you used. Just type one. Get off that. That's right. Just type. You don't need to. Just write over. It. Just go right over. It. All right. So now, what's the equation? What do I want to do to make this work? You put menu. Menu. Statistics. Statistics. One. And then look where we're at. MX plus B. We're at MX plus B. We're finally exactly where we want to be. So let's hit three. Now we put X and Y. X and Y. Don't hit enter. It doesn't like it. And then when you hit enter, you're good. Yep. Why are you not doing this? So, look at this. It says M is... M is 7. What's B? 1. Pretty flat out simple, right? Chess. So if you get a table and you don't feel like doing it by hand, the calculator will do the majority of the work for you. You just have to enter it incorrectly. All right. So now you know three ways to get everything we had there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a graph. Graphs are actually some of your easiest. Whoever's humming or singing, stop. You said graphs. Graphs are some of the easiest. One, we need a slope. Now. All I got to do is find two lattice points. I gave you two lattice points here. I gave you two negative three. And this one's zero comma something. If the x coordinate is zero, what is the y coordinate? One. One. But what else do we call that? Origin. No. The origin is down here. What do we call this up here? Flat. We call it the y intercept because it's intercepting the y axis. The y-intercept is where it crashed into the y-axis or crashed through it. So 0, 1. Now, I could use my slope. I could use my m formula, right? m equals y2 minus y1. Mm -hmm. But it seems hard. If I've got a graph, what's the easiest thing to do? Rise, rise over run. So how far did I rise from this point? Four. 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 How far did I run? So rise is 4, so m equals a rise of 4 over a run of 2. What's that equal? 2 over 1 or 2. What's the y-intercept of this line? What's the y-intercept of this line? 0, 1, because 1 is the y-intercept. Anytime x is 0, we know the y-intercept is instantaneously. So now I can write my equation. Y equals M, which we found to be 2, plus 1. Now, here's my question. Did this rise to the left or rise to the right? So what's the slope? Negative 2. Any questions? Get your chair down. Is there any questions? No. So three ways. You can find the slope with m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You can fly, find the slope by doing rise over run. You can find the y or the 
the y-intercept by either putting it in an equation where you take a pair of coordinates, x and y, you plug them in, you take the slope, plug it in, and then you find solve for b. You can do regression. If you've got a pattern, you can work backwards until you get to that zero where x is zero, whatever y is is your y-intercept. You can also use the calculator to type it in. Remember, once you have a functioning uh, spreadsheet, you can just retype numbers over the X's and Y's, and it'll automatically show you. You don't have to re-enter that whole stage. So once it's functioning, it's beautiful forever. Okay, And graphs are pretty easy. Rise or run, remember, rise to the left means what kind of slope? Negative. Rise to the right? Positive. All right, ending recording.